Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. So, my name is Patrick Bergman. I'm 25 years old. I was born in Oslo and I play football. Football is something that I do all my life. I have big credits to to this game because uh, if not football, my uh, life could have been completely different. Like I'm talking 180 degrees. I could have been a bomb lying now in the in in the forest uh, trunk after the weekend. Fat, lazy, with no ambition, no goals. And uh, here I am, 25 years old, uh, football player that is uh, playing in the second uh, division in order third tier, and uh, playing as a striker, enjoying my life, having traveled uh, around the Europe to play football and uh, being coached by one of the best coaches uh, in in their fields. That's me. Who are you? Hi guys. Uh, my name is Ahmed Ibrahim. Okay, um, I'm I'm from Somalia, but live in UK. Lived in UK most of my life in Liverpool. Um, fullback, centre back, right? Um, as you can see, Somalis all they do is run. That's my game. Um, really into my fitness. Got a background in SNC and football. Um. As well as that, what I would say is um, football has shaped me who I am. If it wasn't for football, I'd be like in the street life, that road life. Um, so football made me who I am and shaped me to be the person that, that I am today. Um, and like I say, I like to be the best of the best and work with the best of the best. The topic for today is the things that affect your football performance. Okay. I lay you down to, to you, Ahmed, and uh, tell us one thing that uh, you can give to people that affects football performance. What's that? Number one thing for me is sleep. Especially in in an area and a generation of people on their phone, um, going to bed with their phone and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. I don't think people understand and realize how important sleep is for brain development and recovery and ability to retain information. So a lot of people don't know, for example, um, let's say when you learn a new skill, especially when you're 14, 15, 16, um, and you learn how to hit the gym or you learn how to sprint properly, you're learning to learn a new stimulus you're only going to consolidate that stimulus in your sleep. And this is why you see kids nowadays, they're not able to retain information properly. You have to tell them again and again and again, and they can't seem to um, get it like that, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, So I think that's why a lot of people can't consolidate information, can't consolidate memories, can't consolidate um, pattern recognition. We can't consolidate um, any new form of stimulus that they learn, like a skill or whatever it may be, or um, learn how to consolidate that new muscle memory. So that's that's the one thing that I think is really important. And as well as that, Patrick, you because we both of you, me and you have whoop, yeah, yes, uh, whoop gang, right? Um, the one thing I've learned the last year is people say, oh yeah, you need six to seven and a half hours of sleep. To, to, to feel somewhat recovered but that sleep is for normal people for the average people people that go uh, work people that don't that only cover 5,000 steps people that work in the office whatever one thing I realised I don't know you tell me Patrick but that's the base and then how much strain you have in terms of exercise you do well I add how much sleep you need there's the base plus strain. So, from, for example, if you've done a high box to box, you covered a lot of distances, whatever, especially game day. 
you might need an extra one and a half, two hours sleep. But that's not seven and a half's gone to nine and a half now. Right? And on top of that, if you slept four the last yesterday and the day before, you have sleep death as well. So this is why people need to stop like accumulating like bad habits because um like to say you need to focus on a task in hand in front of you because you don't know what's to come in the coming days. You might get sick, so you're not gonna sleep properly. You might um be traveling or when you're traveling long distances, you might get stuck on the motorway. It might it might affect your sleep or you might be asked to do an extra shift or whatever. Always Every day, make sure you don't have debt for the next coming days because you don't know what's to come in the next coming days. That's one tip that I'd give to everyone. Yeah, and two things I can add to, to this is uh, about sleep debt is that if you slept bad yesterday, mm. it, it doesn't matter that you sleep better today and you slept more, you still slept bad yesterday. And this sleep is staying with you. It's not like, okay, I slept two hours yesterday, but uh, tomorrow I can sleep uh, 14 hours and then it will balance out and I will I will have a good sleep. No, if you sleep badly, if, if you sleep two hours, four hours, it affects your performance for the next week, I would say, because it takes mm. your body a long time to recover from it. So it's about the consistency and be consistent with the, with the sleeping pattern and the go to sleep in the same times and wake up also in the same times. And one thing I, I found about sleep is that if you, if something in your life happened, okay, you cannot go to sleep on the same, same time as you, as you usually go, go to at least wake up at the same time, because you want mm -hmm. to keep your body, body in check that, okay, this is the time to wake up. The second thing I could add to it is uh, the skill development doesn't happen on a training session. It happens when your brain is processing all the data after the training and especially in the night when you sleep. So like ideally, it's it's like one hidden gem, but many athletes, like especially tennis players, they sleep after the trainings because then all this data that they accumulated on the session is just, uh, just uh, improving their skill. Mm. So uh, the one from me, I would say, is the diet. Mm. Before you go on a diet, this mm. is why a lot of athletes, like LeBron James, Ronaldo, blah, 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 they all nap two, three times a day. That's the reason for it. And it doesn't it doesn't have to be a deep sleep. It could be um, non-deep sleep, restorative sleep, basically. Um, and that could be like 30 minutes and stuff like that. And... You see it in like cultures where uh, they live in a hot city, uh, siesta time, they sleep in like, especially like Madrid, Madrid players, like in Spain and Latin America, they sleep in the afternoon, like around like two to four o'clock, and then they go back out and stuff like that. That's the, that's the reason behind it. Um, obviously, in Europe, we don't have that, sadly, um, uh, but that's the reason behind it. So, Players need to ask themselves questions why and understand why uh, the best of the best are doing like that and then understand the research behind it as well. Yeah, we could talk about sleep all day, all the episode. Uh, I can just say the last thing is that uh, there is a life hack for sleep. Okay. Many people take the nap to gain energy, but many people can also struggle. To, to sleep in uh, in certain positions or certain situations or they cannot fall asleep, just meditate, bro. Meditation mm. is as good as sleep because you want to clear everything that is going on in your brain. Just clear it out for 20 minutes, bro. You, you're going to have so much more energy. Mm. 100%. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's move on to diet now, okay? Uh, one thing that uh, it took me many years to understand is that it, you need to eat much earlier before the game than you think. Like there is a saying that you need to eat three hours before training or three, hour, uh, three hours before training. Yeah. And I was thinking, okay, three hours before training. Okay. So probably it's the same with the game. No, bro. There was uh, once it was uh, 
once it, once I saw Real Madrid uh, documentary, and uh, it was a short interview with Tony Cross before Champions League final, and uh, the journalist asked him, Tony, what do you usually eat before the games? And he said, uh, to be honest, I try to eat as little as possible because I like to feel a bit of hunger before the game. Because when I have a clear, clear, uh, clear stomach, then I have a clear brain as well. So uh, that's one thing that I I learned is is to not eat too soon before the the game, because we are talking about the games now, like trainings. Okay, you can get away with uh, even two and a half hours before before the session, but uh, before the game, I would say five hours. You want to eat the last meal five hours before the game? Of course, it depends from from person to person. And uh, of course, it, it it what you eat also affects your performance. Like if you mm. eat uh, KFC, you will be all bloated. You will be like boop, boop, all mm-hmm. the game. Doesn't matter mm. if you ate it uh, eight hours before, your body will still carry this. Uh, Mm. These uh, seed oils and uh, all of the shit that uh, they are using in these uh, fast foods. I'm gonna say something controversial. We like that. I'm gonna say something very controversial. I'm a firm believer everyone should do a food intolerance test. And people are gonna be like, "Well, I'm okay with that dairy. Yeah, I'm okay with gluten. I'm okay with this. But well, I'm okay with seeded oils. I've been eating." especially the Africans, been eating seeded oils all, all my life, whatever. And I'm like, oh, God. That's because you've been having systemic body inflammation all your life, so you don't know what's normal. I'm a firm, but like, it does not, it only costs about, I think, 100 quid or something like that. You need to get a test, and you get a result within a week, and you'll notice what's good for you and what's bad for you. And sometimes intolerance doesn't mean you're allergic to it intolerance just means your body can't handle that type of food on a consistent amount of times that's all that means so if you want to maximize your um if you want to maximize your performance you know your let's say your body's like the engine you know your engine is more petroleum based but what type of petroleum is different you're not going to tell me I'm going to put 90% petroleum and a little bit of diesel. doesn't work, man. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Your engine's going to break down. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's, like, it's the same thing. You need to understand what fuel is best for your body and everyone's genetic makeup, DNA, the, way, the gut microbiome, everything is completely different and unique. That's why you need to, you, you can't just start following other people. You need to do your own trial and error and then do your own test to kind of get an idea what's best for you and retrain your normal. I'm a firm believer of that, man. What I could add to it is, uh, okay, you cannot afford the, the the test. Just do a journal on how you feel after certain foods. Like, because I was, uh, I was doing this myself, I was doing the journaling, I found out that uh, I'm feeling very bad after eating grapes. So I took them out from the diet. Fantastic. Mm. You could you could even do like how you feel 12 hours, three hours, see how you feel. Like, is it making you bloated? Is it giving any digestion? Is it affecting your sleep? Is it making you feel heavy? And stuff like that. And then, well, like I said, we're trying to know you and keeping a diet. You pick up a pattern. Sometimes it's a food combination when you eat a combination of certain foods. Sometimes it's when you eat certain particular food, but in high dosage, you get all right in low dosage, but high dosage, it triggers it. Sometimes it's a time of the day. Oh, yeah, when I eat um, foods that are heavy in fat late in the night, I feel sick and stuff like that. So maybe have the fat in the morning and in the afternoon and then towards the evening, have more protein. You need to kind of get an idea of what's affecting your performance and what's affecting your sleep. Um, and nothing better but um to to keep a journal and another thing controversial as well footballer you'd rather overeat than under eat you'd rather have an overload of because uh, your muscles need glucose it likes to store glycogen 
if you don't fill up all your clay, you're going to get gassed out, bro. Been there, done that, bro. <laughs> you're going to get gassed out completely. Yeah, that's just, that's actually interesting. Like, uh, I have been in so many dressing rooms and many best players in the team, they just have a rack, you know, rack on them because they eat kebab after the training sessions. And that's like, you never see a skinny guy being the best in the team. Usually see like little, like medium fat guy. Little medium fat guy with a little bit rack on, on, on him. Bro, he's the yeah. most skillful guy because yeah, he has yeah. the energy to to do his his thing on the football pitch. And the skinny yeah, guy it's... is always weak. Oh. Um, that's why I like... Um... That's what, then they're the, they're the guys that are more consistent in like games throughout the whole season. Um, mm. For example, like, yeah, it, that's why, like, the, it's always the muscly guys or the medium to fat guys that are because they can store an uh, engine, like, and they're the kind of guys that can perform consistently, consistently throughout the whole 90 minutes, throughout the whole season. Um, but that's the one thing that I think. Um, you can't, you can, in my opinion, you can't out train a diet. You, you can't. I'm sorry, but you can't. Because if, you, if your diet is horrible, the performance is going to be horrible. Um, but then, then the other that. thing, like uh, if your diet is horrible, that's okay, but you will not be a football player. Just forget it. You, you, you can eat KFC, but just know that you will not be a football player. So it's mm. like up to you. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's all about priorities and what they think is important in my life. Um, again, people are like, oh yeah, I'll get rid of it. Oh yeah, I'm the star player. Oh yeah, but I see it happening. But and then next minute they pull the hamstring. Next minute they find they get a niggle. Next minutes, I'm like, think of it this way. Think of it this way, right? When you train. You're you're depleting your you're depleting your credit in the bank, right? So let's say for example, um, sleep a plus in the credit bank, right? You put money into the bank, diet, putting in money into the bank, okay. Managing your mental stress, putting money into the bank, okay. Um, doing an, uh, enough training and stuff like that, putting um money in the bank, meditation, putting money in the bank, okay. Then when it comes to game day or performance day, okay, you're looking at your bank, okay. I'm like, is this bank gonna last me the whole the whole uh, 90 minutes? If it's not, then you've got a problem. So you know I mean, but if, if, if it has to be like you can give it you give um you you're making sure you're increasing the probability and the likelihood and the chances of you performing and that, that performance going your way. That's all it is. If you if you fail to prepare, then prepare to fail. I ask ask one of my mottos. Okay, let me just uh, give you a few few short ones. Okay, a few short ones that we don't need to discuss so long. I wrote them down. Okay. Uh, shoes, shoes can affect your performance. If you have, we discussed this before. If you have too big shoes or too small shoes, bro, it's affects affecting your performance. Uh, tight socks okay that's why you see bellingham making the holes in the socks like for me like this is just stupid i i don't like it but uh, i agree that some certain players have the such a big calves that they just need to do something like usually the, the socks especially the new ones they, they get too tight and if you have the muscly calves it, it's just uncomfortable uncomfortable to play in them and you get cramps easily Wrong sized kit. The amount of times, bro, I was playing with wrong size kit. Usually the the small ones, like uh, size S, size M. I'm one hundred ninety four centimeters. Okay, I'm not a small guy. And imagine you put on a size S on me, <laughs> and <laughs> and tell me to run ninety minutes in it, bro. But that's like I'm something. Yeah, bro. That's uh, that's that's something that uh, I don't know. I don't know how to get away with it if you play for a team that doesn't have kids, you know. 
doesn't have many kids. I guess you need to be the first one to grab your kid, size L. <laughs> oh, yeah. I bet you liked it. No homo. Nah, bro. Nah. <laughs> bro, that was like thermical Man shit. playing with speedos. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I remember once uh, I played uh, for Galacticus uh, for uh, Tony's team. And uh, the shirts were too big. Like, that was a completely different thing. So, like, it wasn't size S, but it was double XL or triple XL. And the shorts, bro, the shorts were like this. You know, my leg is this, and the shorts were like this. So I had to fold them under and then, uh, bro. They were basketball shorts. Eh? Basketball shorts, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go. I remember that. Like, yeah. Uh... And uh, and uh, the the last two two things I could just say the small ones I would I would say uh, pitch and weather can also affect your performance. If the pitch is dry and you have metal studs, what you doing, bro? What are you doing? Oh, that's ACL gone, bro. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Same with nice. the weather. If it's windy, and you're the guy that is uh, usually playing uh, playing long ball and it's so windy and it's the wind is against you maybe it's not smart to use your long balls this game yeah um to be honest we, we'll have to discuss this in another episode but um i think a lot of people don't use their brains and let the environment um work in their favor for example, like I said, windy. You know, don't clip the ball, just play on the ground. Right? For example, um, if it's rainy, okay, maybe it's and um, but the pitch is heavy and like for example, like the, the ball stops because it's very heavy rain. Okay, maybe you need to clip it, but when you clip it, overhit it because you know it's not gonna bounce and then it's just gonna stick. Do you know what I mean? For example, um if it's if the if the grass is wet. Slippy. Just make sure when, as a striker, when you're shooting, you shoot low and hard because it's gonna zip. That's the keeper. Um, and little things like that where let the environment, like, like work in your favor. Or if the certain teams like uh, Stoke used to do it, Stoke City back in the Premier League, um, they used to make their grass a little bit long, like a few centimeters longer than usual. So when you're passing the ball. Bro, the, the the ball sticks. That makes sense. And it doesn't like when you take a touch, it doesn't like come out of your feet. It like it stays. And like, mm. or when, when you pass the ball, the ball just like goes quick and then slows down midway. I'm like, like so that when you warm it up, recognize the environment that you're playing in. That's really important. And that's that again as having that ability to kind of gain that extra one percent in your game. Get an idea. I don't know. Do what you need to do. If you need to, to test to see the wind, do it. I don't care. Do you know I mean? See where the wind's coming from. So when you're defending, when you're trying to head the ball, you're going to understand when I judge the ball, is the ball going to fly over my head or is it going to hang because the wind's against me or whatever. Get, get an idea of the environment so it, it just doesn't hold you back, your performance. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, okay? Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play Podcast. Back to the big ones, okay? Jim, I had a talk with uh, with Thomas, uh, our previous uh, podcast guest, and I asked what, what was one of the things that uh, he changed that uh, improved his performance. And he said that I used to be the guy that was always in the gym before the games. Like one day before the game. And uh, he was saying that uh, many times I was training upper body just uh, 24 hours before the game because I really wanted to get big. But uh, in fact, it was just affecting his performance mm. because all the inflammation, all the neurological load, everything was going, uh, going through him. He was carrying it uh, to the game. Because mm. his body did not have time to recover. 24 hours before the game is, is too little to recover. Mm. Even neuro touch... neurologically. Mm. Mm. I'm going to touch on it a little bit. Um, 
gym is good. If you need, if you feel like you need to um, improve your explosiveness, your power, your strength, um, even even from my injury prevention, making sure to be a balance between the left and the right leg strength in uh, anterior chain, posterior chain, whatever it may be, your core strength, whatever it may be, that's all good, right? But schedule it and manage your workload according to your weekly schedule in football, right? Don't make gym the priority over football. Make the football the priority and let the gym work around the football. So... In a sense, a lot of people tend to forget, oh, yeah, I need to get big, blah, blah, blah. And they slowly tend to shift their focus more towards the gym and less towards football. Um, so what I would say to, to guys like that is, yeah, you can still focus in the gym, but manage your workload. So instead of doing like a three set of eight or whatever, okay, do three sets of three, still going heavy, minimal load, minimal neurological stress, minimal physiological stress, minimal tears in the muscle, if that makes sense. Or even do three sets of three, but partial range of movement. So instead of doing a squat, can I do a um, box squat? So you're only working on the upper portion, if that makes sense, go three sets of three. Little things like that. Um, so it won't affect you. You'll, you'll get doms, less doms. You'll get a less neurological stress. And you'll still get the stimulus that's needed to gain that strength and gain that power that you're looking for. So it's, again, if if you're really struggling to kind of, ha- if you don't have the knowledge to learn how to manage the workload, how to maximize and get the minimal effective dosage to to maximize performances, maybe you need to kind of like invest in a coach, invest in an SNC coach. That's what they're there for. That's their that's their forte, that's their field of knowledge. So maybe you need to kind of like um delegate and deload that stress of oh, I need to plan work out blah blah and to someone that is knowledgeable. So you don't have to stress about what I should do, what I should not do. You'll have that guidance from someone. It's uh, one uh, thing that uh, is touching on gym is either too much load or too little load. And uh, as we learned, is that not only too much load, but also too little load can cause the, and, and can cause you getting injured. And like, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know about you, Ahmed, but uh, if I would have to choose between going to the game feeling heavy after low after too much load, or fresh as fuck because uh, I did not train the whole week before the the game, I would actually rather to be more heavy. Mm. From from accumulated load because at least I, my body would be used to the used to the resistance, and like when mm. you're when you did not train the whole week and you go to the game, it's it's just a matter of time that you get injured because your body mm. will just just uh, your body is not prepared for the load, mm. and also technically, if you, I don't know about you, but uh, when I'm fresh i'm fresh as fuck okay i did not uh, train hard uh, i don't know three or two days before the game my touch is off because i'm like too too raw i'm too electric i call it we have, we have a saying uh, you're like a dude cell bunny the battery mm, go, yeah. go 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 whoa maybe like sonic the hedgehog yeah. bro. bro like erratic yeah i feel like that sometimes correct me if i'm wrong patrick but because me and you, I don't know, when I was with was, was me and you, I've been suffering with tendon injuries, right? right? And tendon injuries is more when you're not loading properly or, or you're loading incorrectly or you're loading in, you're not loading enough or you're just overloading a little bit. When I don't train, when I've taken a, a few days off and I go back to that um, 80% of that load, I, st- I get pain again. But when I've accumulated load and I increased it, I don't get pain. Yeah, I'm fatigued. I'm fatigued. I'm not. I'm not denying it. I'm fatigued, but I don't get pain. It's it's a weird. It's a it's a weird dynamic. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a mental thing. I don't know. But that's one thing I've noticed as well, especially with tendon injuries. And on the days that I haven't trained, yeah, yeah, I'm more than likely to feel my groin. To feel my hip flexor because I didn't do my isometric work or whatever, Copenhagen, whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, 
uh, like I said, each to their own, everyone's level of um, workload and how much they can handle is completely different. But in general rule of thumb, don't as, unless you're going through off season and you're taking a break, don't exceed or don't decrease more than 10% per week. Yes, agree hundred percent. And uh, as you know, I used to be the guy that was. Uh, I told you that I I was taking a few weeks off after the season, and bro, I learned that you, as a football player, you never take vacation. You always need to train. Like okay, you mm. can deload as you said ten percent, but uh, you still need to train. It's not like the season is finished and you're like, ah, vamos a la playa. Uh, uh, uh. No, no, nah. bro, no. Nah. Um, you train all like, your life, twenty years. Just uh, accept it. Um, like I say, um, you're either deloading as it is. I'm not playing football as much anyway. So why do you need to deload the gym as well? Uh, like you're extremely deloaded fully. Um, you're already not doing as much CV work, like cardiovascular training, like what covering. Because as a footballer, you cover between 30, 30, on average, 35 kilometers per week, which is a lot. So, I mean, that's how much you cover per week. You can't go from 35 to nothing. And then, and six weeks later, expect to come back in the club. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Do you know what I mean? So, that's why you need to kind of do, again, decrease your load, minimal effective dosage, okay? Um... And to, like I said, don't decrease it more than ten percent, or increase it more than ten percent. Don't don't in, during the season as well. Don't ever do that unless you're injured. Um, unless you're taking one two the first one two weeks off, a holiday and like that. Like I say, anywhere between seven to ten days is enough uh, time off after the season. Um, but anything after that is just too much. So, two things. Okay. Two things. Rehab exercises and small pains that you have, okay? Number one is uh, rehab exercises. I learned the hard way that if you do rehab exercises while coming back from injury and playing already on the pitch, you're putting too much load already. Because you need to understand that if you, for example, sprain ankle. If you sprain ankle, and then, okay, you, you did your rehab, you're back on the pitch. But then you continue to do the rehab exercises while playing football. It's just too much load. And you're going to break break down again. And the I second, agree. just, just, uh, and the second thing, the small itches, the small pains that you have. This is always a signal from your body that is uh, something is wrong. It's too much load. And it will always affect your football performance. 100%. You cannot play, like, I remember once I played a game with the plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis, yeah. And uh, I was just running like a dog the whole game. And I was so bad as well because I couldn't sprint properly because because of too much pain in my in my feet. I was thinking that, okay, I, I can I can swallow the pain. I can I can do this. I can work hard. No, bro. I was just running like a duck, and it, it's just impossible to play good if you if you have in the back of your head that, oh, each step, oh, ow. Oh. Mm, 100%. It, uh, it's having the ability to understand when to take a step forward and step back. And rehabilitation, uh, especially because I'm a physio, right? I'm a qualified physio. Um, we, we have a saying when you're doing your rehab as long as not a sharp pain and as long as the pain is more not more than four out of ten you're okay and as long as the pain doesn't um stay you know when you get a pain and then it just goes away that pain is fine but you know when you get a pain and then it stays there all day don't do that that's how you know you've overdone it or that's how you know you've messed up you've taken a step too far um, so it's ability to kind of recognize what's good pain 
like adaptive pain so your body's adapting um what's a bad pain as in like oh yeah you've messed up it's an acute pain um that type of thing and again it's the ability to listen to your body and uh, know the difference what i found is uh, the crowd has no effect on my performance like i don't know about you but uh, it doesn't matter for me if i play against uh, if i play with uh, one person in the crowd or uh, one thousand like the most I played the uh, played the uh, for is was one thousand, so mm. I found it's it's it makes no difference for me. How about you? No difference because I mean I'm too busy being in the flow zone, mm -hmm. and that's what a lot of people again can't get in that flow zone because they can't trust themselves. They can't trust themselves because they haven't built enough credit in the bank. Mm. It's like imagine you're going to dealing to so doing dealing negotiation as a sales person, but you don't have a budget or a fund. It don't make sense. Like uh, I heard the quote that uh, if you want to be happy, you need to be in the flow zone as often as possible. Let that sink in, ah. okay? Yeah, mm. that's a deep mm. one. Um, I sent you a quote yesterday, Pastor. Get up. A deep one. Mm. Right. Life is a string of problems, okay? That gives meaning when you solve it. Or it gives struggle when you ignore it. Right? That's all life is. It's always a string of problems, right? So what I say to people is if you don't have the capability of problem solving on the pitch or in training or in the gym, ability to adapt exercises, whatever. That's because you haven't been through life, enough life experiences and you don't know how to be uncomfortable. This is what I mean by preparation leads to success. If you're like still a rookie or you still don't know what you're doing, get a mentor, get someone that is expert in the field, learn from them. This is why in our intro we say, we want to be the best and most learn from the best. And then we get all of that and then we lay the information to you guys, right? It's up to you what you guys do with that information. But you need to stop being hard-headed, stubborn, because a good person learns from their experience, right? A wise person learns from other people's experience because they realize time is precious. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.